everyone, I am Janvi Pavar. Welcome back to another video. Now, in this one, we're going to be talking about some idiomatic expressions and phrases. What are idiomatic expressions and phrases? Forget the word idiomatic for now. You know what expressions and phrases are? Expressions and phrases are the words and different sort of sentences that we use in our daily life. So we're going to be taking a look at some expressions and phrases in English. So let's get started. Also, for now, forget about this word. Once we are going to go through the phrases and expressions, so you're going to understand by yourself what idiomatic means. So let's go and let's get started. Okay, so the first one we have over here is bite the bullet. What is bite the bullet? Bite the bullet is used in a situation where you have to face a difficult situation with courage. For example, uh, there is a difficult situation. For example, you have an exam and you have not prepared for that exam because of an emergency. But now you are going to have to sit for that exam. So what are you going to do? You're going to bite the bullet. So to use it in a sentence, I'm going to say, uh, 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 she has to, she has to bite the bullet she has to bite the bullet in today's exam in today's exam so it can be any sort of situation you know for example uh you know uh god forbid but one of your family members is sick so what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to bite the bullet that means you're gonna have to face that situation with courage so in order to face that situation with courage you're gonna use the expression bite the bullet next we have burn the midnight oil what is burn the midnight like there is an oil in the midnight and you burn it not really. Actually, it means to work late into the night or early early morning hours. So if you're in your office and you have been working till 9 p.m., 10 p.m., or maybe even late, or if you're working early in the morning, like at 3 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, so you're doing what? You're burning the midnight oil. So in order to use it in a, in a sentence, you can say, I have been, I have been, burning the midnight oil burning the midnight oil burning the midnight oil for this new project for this new project since a week since a week that means i've been working late or i've been working early hours for a new project since a week next we have cut to the chase what is cut to the chase cut to the chase means to get to the main point without unnecessary details you know let me give you a situation okay for example there is a meeting and one of the employees is talking on something and the boss can say all right cut to the chase that means that person has been talking about details that were not relevant to the meeting or details that were extremely irrelevant not important at all so that person was beating around the bush that means that person was just wasting time talking about whatever things so the boss asked him to cut to the chase that means get to the main point don't waste time so he was he was beating around the bush he was beating around the bush and the boss and the boss asked him and the boss asked him to cut to the chase to cut to the chase next up we have hit the hay what is hit the hay now hit means to go somewhere for example do you want to hit the party that means do you want to go to the party not like you're gonna hit it hit it but hit the hay means to go to bed so her mother or her father has been asking her has been asking her to hit the hay to hit the hay since three hours since three hours that means the father has been asking his daughter since three hours to go to bed so to go to bed means hit the hay for example hey where were you yesterday night oh i hit the hay early that means i went to bed early 
The next we have break the ice. What is break the ice? Like you have ice and you break it? Not that kind of thing. Break the ice actually means to initiate. Initiate means start. Initiate means what? Initiate means start. So to start a conversation in a social setting. For example, social setting refers when you're sitting with a group of people. So over there, if you're in a party and nobody's talking to anyone, well, that's kind of like a contrasting situation for a party. But if you're at a party and nobody's talking to anyone, so somebody has to start talking, you know, somebody has to break the ice. So that means she is always the one, she's always the one to break, to break the ice. This social setting, it actually refers to some sort of awkward situation, you know, a situation where nob nobody is in the place of talking with anybody. So that is a social setting. For example, mm -mm -mm, you had a competition, you know, and you were with your team. Now you all lost the competition. Somebody else won. I'm sorry. But now that you all lost the competition, now you all are sitting and you all are not talking to each other. Why? Because you all are sad. But now there is some girl and she starts talking first. So what does she do? What, she, what, did she, what did she do? She broke the ice. So somebody who starts a conversation in an awkward social setting is the person who breaks the ice. So the first one we had on this page was bite the bullet. Then we had burn the midnight oil. Then we had cut to the chase, then we had hit the hay and break the ice. Now, just like I use them in different examples, I also want you guys to use them in different examples. Moving on to the next one, what do we have here? Okay, so the first one is, this is one of my personal favorites, jump on the bandwagon wagon what is jump on the bandwagon? It means to join others in doing something popular or trendy. You know, all of those uh, trendy reels on Instagram and when TikTok was here in India. So everybody used to follow like a trend. So there is a music and everybody is dancing this, 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 that. So everybody's following that. That means everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. So for example, everybody is jumping. Everybody is jumping on the bandwagon let me write it over here is jumping on the bandwagon to do the new instagram challenge to do the new instagram challenge this is super dumb though you know whenever we see any new trend or challenge we tend to copy the same i don't feel like it's very cool but jump on the bandwagon means to join others in doing something popular or trendy for example your school is the students of your school they are doing something you know they are participating in some sort of project and you do the same so you have jumped on the bandwagon next we have cost an arm and a leg so it does not mean you know you buy something and then you got to give your arm and then your leg now but cost an arm and a leg actually means something that is very expensive something that is very expensive mm -mm -mm. that dress that dress will cost an arm and leg of yours will cost is that cost that is not cost cusd yeah now it's cool cost an arm and leg of yours that means it's super expensive it's a phrase to say that something is expensive the next that we have piece of cake what is piece of cake you guys must have already heard this because i use this in a lot of uh, situations and videos piece of cake is something that is super easy to do you know so for example doing the new project doing the new project is a piece of cake for me is a piece of cake for me m e okay so doing the new project is a piece of cake for me that means it's super easy for me i can do this very easily so for example your teacher is saying something oh oh this is a piece of cake that means it's super easy it's very easy next we have cry over spilled milk you guys already know this one, but what is cry over spilled milk? Like the milk has been spilled and now you're crying, oh, why did this spill? 
not that kind of thing, but cry over spilled, mean, uh, spilled milk means to dwell on a past mistake or misfortune. You know those people, so something happened with me, something happened with me, okay, happened, that was in the past. But if you're going to keep repeating your past bad luck or misfortune, misfortune, and not just misfortune, maybe a mistake you made, for example, you got less marks in a test, does not mean it's going to make any difference now to keep repeating that over and over. So crying over spilled milk means, you know, to cry over the same thing, same mistake or same misfortune. So, she keeps crying over, she keeps crying over spilled milk. She keeps crying over spilled milk. And that's why, and that's why she can't move forward. She can't move forward. All right. Next, we have over here, bite off more than you can chew. So what is bite off more than you can chew? Like, you know, you took, you take a huge bite, but your mouth is not that big that you can chew all of that. So what did you do? You took on something that is beyond your ability. So beyond your ability. So when you try to do something that you cannot do easily, or that is beyond your skills, beyond your ability. So in that sort of situation, you use the phrase, buy it up more than you can chew. For example, when she took control of the project, she actually, she actually bit off more than she can chew, more than she can chew. So that means she took on something too big for her, too big for her abilities. So the first one on this page we had, jump on the bandwagon, cost an arm and a leg, piece of cake, cry over spilled milk, bite off more than you can chew. Moving on, we have got Okay, so over here we have, well, the first one we have, hit the nail on the head. What is hit the nail on the head? Delete it. So hit the nail on the head means to describe exactly what is causing a situation or problem. So take a nail, hit it on the head. That means describing whatever the situation is or whatever the problem is. Like describing exactly that. So that is hit the nail on the head. For example, uh, 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 you know, there are those people who cannot describe the whole situation properly, so they keep beating around the bush. So that means they cannot hit the nail on the head. So she is not able, she is not able to hit the nail, to hit the nail on the head. That means she is not able to explain the situation clearly or explain the situation exactly how it was. Next, we have let the cat out of the bag. What is let the cat out of the bag? Like you had a bag and there was a cat in it and then you let it out? Not really. Let the cat out of the bag means to reveal a secret. So if there is a secret, so that situation means to let the cat out of the bag. So in, if you have to use this in an, inter in an interrogative form, you're going to say, who let the cat out of the bag. That means who revealed this secret? Who let the cat out of the bag? So very simply, for example, you had a secret and now everybody's aware of that secret. So your friend said, do you know this happened? And you were like, who let the cat out of the bag? That means who revealed the secret? Next, we have burn your bridges. What is burn your bridges? That means there is a bridge and you burned it. Not really. Burn your bridges means to damage relationships or opportunities that cannot be repaired. So if you have any sort of relationship with anyone, you know, I'm not just talking about a partner, but it can be with your family, your friends. So, or if you have any sort of opportunities, but after once you like damage them, once you destroy them, you cannot repair them back. You cannot repair them. So that means you're burning your bridge. So... You will burn, you will burn all of your bridges 
all of your bridges if you if you uh, 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 if you fight with your brother now that means you're gonna destroy your relationship with your brother if you're gonna fight with him you're gonna burn bridges and you're not you cannot repair him with your brother now next we have keep an eye on the ball what does this mean there is a ball and you're keeping an eye on it not really keep an eye on the ball means to remain focused on the main issue or task the boss asked him to keep an eye to keep an eye on the ball that means to remain focused with the task what the issue is remain focused on that that means keep an eye on the ball for example you're preparing for any test so i'm going to ask you to keep your eye on the ball that means stick to the main issue or your task you know do not go wasting or procrastinating anything next we have spill the beans spill the beans and let the cat out of the bag are actually the same uh you know they mean the same thing that means to disclose a secret to reveal a secret so you can in interrogative form again you can use this uh, you can use this as who spilled the beans like she spilled the beans about you that means she revealed a secret about you so spill the beans so in this page we learned hit the nail on the head yeah, it means to describe the situation or problem exactly how it is. Let the cat out of the bag to reveal a secret. Burn your bridges. That means, you know, to damage relationships or opportunities and you cannot repair them. Then we had keep an eye on the ball. So to remain focused on one goal. And then we had spill the beans. That means to reveal a secret, to disclose a secret. Moving on, what do we have here? So over here we have the first one kick the bucket like there is a bucket and you kick it not really kick the bucket means to die <laughs> kind of dark so kick the bucket means to die his grandfather his grandfather kicked the bucket kick the bucket kick the bucket this week that means his grandfather died this week. Next, we have hold your horses. Like you have horses and you're going to hold them? Not really. Hold your horses means to wait or to be patient. Like, all right, slow down. Hold your horses. So slow down is like another alternative for it. Slow down. Hold your horses. H-O-R-A-C-S. Next, we have under the weather, one of my personal favorites. Under the weather means feeling ill or sick. For example, I have been traveling. I have been traveling consistently, consistently for two weeks, for two weeks, and now I'm under the weather. That means now I'm feeling sick. I'm under the weather. Next, we have throw in the towel. What is throw in the towel? Throw in the towel means <clears throat> to give up or surrender. You know, you do not have a towel and you're not going to throw it. But to surrender means to throw in the towel. towel. The new wrestler, the new wrestler, threw in the new wrestler threw in the towel or towel as soon as as soon as the fight started as soon as the fight started that means he surrendered as soon as the fight started next we have bite your tongue what? bite your tongue like you bite your tongue like that? No. It means to refrain from speaking, especially when it's difficult to do so. For example, you really, really want to say something, but it's not the right situation to say that thing. So that means, you know, you cannot do that. 
For example, in a funeral, obviously you're not going to say anything. So you're going to have to, you know, in order to follow the rules, you're going to have to stay quiet. But you do not want to stay quiet. So that means you're going to have to bite your tongue. So bite your tongue, bite your tongue in a formal social setting, in a formal social setting. So on this page, we learn kick the bucket, hold your horses under the weather, throw in the towel, bite your tongue. Now, I need you to use all of these in different sentences. And as for me, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I hope you all stay safe. Bye, everyone.